I mean, I guess people are just out there copying, you know, like copying the great ideas that we have on the show. Speaking of copying. (laughs) You cued yourself up. (laughs) So smooth. So smooth. I just wanted to show off. This is this is something fun. I've just been seeing a ton of something that you guys might see is familiar. I'm just going to fast forward to this little bit of a a thing. And you guys tell me if this looks at all familiar. (laughs) So we're seeing this vehicle Hmm. and some. Four landing legs deploy, and there's an engine, and then a thing, and then there's these things on top of this rocket that come out, they flip out, and they do a thing, um, and then- Aerodynamic flights? I've never seen that before. That's brilliant. Yep. So does that look look familiar to you guys at all, this thing right here? So if if you're listening- we're basically seeing a Falcon Heavy booster. And they kind of stole their logo Side from booster. MKBHD, too. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> so this is the Callisto rocket, or maybe Callisto, depending on if it's hmm. Spanish or not. No, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, DLR. Dutch, so German. there's that. Then Russia announces this vehicle they're working on. I did see that one. Does yeah. this look familiar? A... Basically, again, a Falcon 9, a little bit shorter, but it's powered by methane. Um, and it can take 12.5 tons for the non reusable, 10.5 tons when reused. But boy, does that look awfully familiar. Um, this is uh, designed to substitute the Soyuz 2 rocket, which would be really exciting. And of course, we've seen this one for a while. This is um, a Chinese startup called Link Space that's working on what looks an awful lot like, again, vertical takeoff landing rocket test that I can't help but think it looks a lot like, you know, a Falcon 9. So I just wanted to kind of talk about some of these things really quick here. Um, We'll see this happen a lot. Again, this isn't necessarily a novel concept. Um, It's been worked on, you know, propulsive landing, propulsive rockets have been around for a long time. The concept's been around for a long time. The DCX was a very successful program in the 90s by Lockheed Martin, which propulsively landed uh, at high speeds even. Uh, At the time it was suborbital, but it was designed to be an orbital booster. And uh, so it's been around for a long time. And now that SpaceX has really proven like, hey, this is legitimately like, you can actually reuse the rocket. It's not just like we land it and then, oh, you know, now we're seeing rockets being reused four or five times, you know, and it's clearly paying off for them. And, And now all of a sudden that's the new benchmark. But it's funny because people were saying this looks exactly like a Falcon 9, blah, 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 this Callisto or Callisto rocket. Um, But this is just a suborbital rocket. So this actually looks a lot more, as far as its mission profile, is a lot more like the new Shepard. Because if you think about it, the new Shepard does a suborbital hop like this. And this is, I guess, just a suborbital booster that's, I suppose, just doing zero G testing inside that little nose cone. And you'll notice that the these are almost more traditional fins, not necessarily um, mm-hmm. not grid fins. The grid fins are, are kind of parallel, um, you know, to the to the the thing, and these are perpendicular to the wind stream. Or wait, no, these are parallel to the wind stream, and grid fins are kind of more perpendicular to the wind stream. Um, but they're basically showing us a vehicle that looks an awfully lot like the Falcon Heavy booster, methane powered, goes up to a, just a suborbital thing. There's nothing on top of it. So I think this is just like a new Glenn or new Shepard. I mean, where you'd want to maybe test something in zero G. I just don't know the the use case for this, but I think it's just more a design demonstrator that can launch vertically and then land. Um, so I think they're just basically doing this to demonstrate that they can do reusable things like SpaceX, which I think is a great thing. Same with the LN, the Amur uh, LNG powered rocket from Russia. Same type of thing, I think. Like they're just going for what has proven to work. It even has grid fins, um, big landing legs. It looks to have three engines, which will be interesting because that that'll be a massive suicide burn. You know, if you have three powerful engines, mm-hmm. a minimum throttle. Uh, if you have them three like that, you basically have to be running all three at minimum. Like I don't know how they're gonna do that, but. Um, that's something to think about. And then this, the link, um, the link space, I think, or whatever it, um, it is. Um, yeah, link space one that for now, I think is just kind of doing more like what um, Maston space does out in a Mojave, where it's just for now, just hopping, learning how to land and do all that type of stuff. So 
we're definitely seeing more of these like Falcon 9 ripoffs. And I think that's fantastic. I think that's exactly what we want to see. I even think that's what SpaceX wants to see. They want to see people doing what what has proven to work out competitively and, you know, commercially and scientifically. Like, of course, utilize this concept and help make spaceflight cheaper, help make spaceflight more competitive. Um, this is great. These knockoffs are fantastic. And there wasn't that the the idea though that the 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 re the hello the reusability of the Falcon Nine would make it so that like just nobody could compete, and so unless they adopt the same idea, I mean that's kind of what's happening. And I I don't know if that yeah. was like a, a statement on the wall that they necessarily had of like <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna make it so you can't even compete with us unless you start doing what we do, but. Maybe maybe that's kind of the behind the scenes mantra, just like just like, you know, Elon's always talking about advancing sustainability using electric vehicles and, and kind of they're, they're just wanting to help advance everyone in that direction. And he's always welcomed, you know, other EVs and he's glad to see the market doing that. I think it's the same type of thing. You know, it's like, no, we're going to make it so you have to compete with us. And in order to do that, you're not going to be throwing away 50 million dollar boosters every day. You know, when was the first actual landing? Uh, like of, of a Falcon, and it was, was it a Falcon Nine? Because it went yeah, from Falcon just, One to the Falcon Nine. Yeah, December twenty first, twenty fifteen. December twenty first, twenty. Wow. So we're coming okay. up on the five year anniversary of landing. Yeah, this all makes sense to me. I mean, imagine. Yeah. You know, they always Elon likes to talk about the uh, airplane analogy. If you threw away the airplane, a- airplane every time, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, like someone does something that is just a step change above. It's like a, a massive leap forward, and. Yeah, everyone's going to copy it, obviously. Well, with mm-hmm. the, the exception of Boeing, apparently. But yeah, everyone that has any economic sense to them, right? Yeah. And real quick, Bamboo Hip Hop had a great question in Discord. Didn't Soyuz have grid fins first? Oh, grid fins have been around forever. Grid fins were designed for missiles um, because they can be... Uh, the grid fin is basically just like a compact fin, a foldable fin. So they used to be tucked up in, in a missile base. So you could have it up in your you know stack of missiles or whatever, or bombs you know, smart bombs in your airplane and they're they're tucked in. And then as soon as they drop the bomb, the grid fins deploy and then, you know, it can steer uh, and have this compact fin design. Um, the Soyuz, the N1 used it on the first stage of the N1. It had four grid fins the size of a room. Basically, they were massive grid fins to help aerodynamically keep it stable and, and, and pointed. Um, the Soyuz, the, on the fairing, there's four grid fins tucked up so that if they were to abort, they deploy those grid fins and they're basically at the aft end of the fairing flying to keep it aerodynamically stable. So grid fins have definitely been around for a long time. But um, yeah, SpaceX was kind of the first one to utilize it uh, for a rocket flying backwards, basically, to help a yeah. rocket fly <laughs> and steer backwards. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com yt. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.